In this lesson, we're going to talk about loops. Looping capability is the last tool that you're going to need to add to your toolbox of constructs in any programming language that allows you to compute anything that is computable. Again, you have input and output. You have decision branching. You have the capability of storing, memorizing, and modifying data. And now, with looping, that is repeating a process, you can compute anything that actually is computable. Now, that doesn't mean that everything is computable. To learn more about computability, you need to take more advanced courses in computability theory. And, of course, we have them in our department. Okay, so what do we mean by loops? Well, as I said, we are going to be able to create code that will repeat some process. Now, there are two kinds of loops in C++, the sentinel loops and the counting loops. There are two sentinel loops in C++, the while statement and the do while statement. They're very similar, as you'll see from the syntax and how they actually work. There's one counting loop. It's the for statement. But before I get into the specific syntax of these loops in C++, I want to talk about loops in general and what is necessary in any kind of a looping structure. You need to have what's called a loop control variable, or perhaps more accurately, a loop control expression. Some variable or combination of variables that's going to control the execution of a loop. We'll make this simple in our example so that we have one variable to deal with and we'll refer to it as the loop control variable. In any loop, the loop control variable must go through three steps. Number one, the loop control variable has to be initialized. Two, it has to be checked or evaluated. And three, it has to be updated. If any one of these three is not included in your loop, then you're going to end up with a broken piece of code. Either the loop will do absolutely nothing, or you can end up with the possibility of what we call an infinite loop, meaning it's going to repeat the process over and over ad infinitum. That, of course, is not acceptable. How do you know if you have an infinite loop? Well, when you execute the program, the cursor will hang in the screen like it's doing absolutely nothing. You'll gaze at it for a few seconds and wonder, well, okay, I'm expecting such and such an output and it doesn't come. If your program isn't doing anything within a second, then probably you're stuck in an infinite loop. That'll be the signal. So how do you rescue yourself from such a situation? Well, the way to do that is with a control C. That is, you're going to hit the control button and the C button at the same time. That will stop the process that is going on in the CPU at the time. If by chance you have an output statement inside your infinite loop, then you're going to see hundreds and thousands of these statements coming out to the screen. It'll be scrolling off the screen like crazy. You'll think that the program has just gone berserk. So depending on the platform you're working on, you may hit control C and it won't stop it. Now the reason for that is the control C is going to stop the process in the CPU, but it won't stop the streaming of the information to the screen. The reason being is that output information is buffered. What comes from the CPU is sent into a register and held until the CPU thinks, well, it's time to kick it on out to the output device. So that may keep happening even though the processor has stopped its operation. If it seems like that's going to go on forever and ever, meaning a few minutes, you have the option of just shutting the window down. You'll have to log back in, and you may have lost some updates, uh, maybe not, but that's a possibility depending on what order you did things in. So Control-C should be able to stop it. Now, that doesn't help you in solving the problem. Of course, the problem being, where is the breakdown in logic? The compiler's not going to find it, obviously you wouldn't have run into this problem. It's a logic problem. The easiest way I think of that you can find these difficulties is to put output statements in your code at strategic locations to determine how far execution has gotten. 
You can write a simple output statement like this, and I would suggest backing it up to the left-hand margin of your program so that you can locate that statement easily. In other words, it will be out of format. So you look through your code when you're getting near done or after you've found the problems, and you can see these output statements and delete them. Another point that's really very important is this right here. I'll explain later the difference between using an inline and using the backslash in, as you will see in some publications. Both of them seemingly do the same thing, inline and backslash in inside the quote. For instance, if I were to put a backslash in right here, what would happen is that will send the cursor back to the beginning of the next line right after the word this. So both of these do the same thing, but the end line has the added bonus that it will flush the buffer. That way, if you put an output statement in a strategic location, you're not going to be fooled by its late sending out to the output device. That is to say, that output statement could be sent to a buffer, the CPU go on to execute other processes, and other code, and get stuck in your loop, you don't see the output statement and therefore you think that your error is not where it really is. But if you put that in line there, then you have a true indication as to what's going on. So don't forget the end line. Okay, so you put your statement, you compile, execute, and don't forget to compile again. Save and compile. Otherwise you're just executing your last executable and no changes have been made and you get fooled. You run the program and made it to this point comes out to the screen and then it hangs. So you know that the problem is after that point. And then you can move the statement around until you've nailed down the block of code where the problem is. And that's the basics of loops. In the next lesson we're going to take a look at the specific syntax in C++ for the sentinel loops, the while and do while, and the for statement.